Welcome to another edition of A Game of Day by Zay, presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. I'm Isaiah Rhodes, and this is Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Finals between the Milwaukee Bucks and Atlanta Hawks. The Bucks lead the series two games to one, but the story of this game will be the Hawks being without the services of their old world point guard, Trey Young, who left, well, who finished Game 3, uh, but he got injured with a sprained ankle towards the latter part of that third quarter, and he was hampered in the fourth. The Bucks were able to finish that game out 113 to 102. Chris Middleton had 38 points, 20 in the uh, fourth quarter, while Giannis Antetokounmpo had 33 points. Now, Trey Young had 35 points, 32 through three quarters, and he was really keeping pace for the Hawks, keeping them in the game. Uh, but unfortunately, that, that uh, sprained ankle was just too much to bear. Uh, throughout the day in between both games and the Hawks air on the side of caution, hoping that more rehab will prepare for game five, which will be uh, in two days. Now, so far, the Hawks are up five to two. Lou Williams is starting in the place of uh, Trey Young. Bogdan Bogdanovich, Lou Williams, Clint Capella, Kevin Herter, and John Collins are the starting five for the Hawks today. For the Bucks, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Brooke Lopez, Drew Holiday, P.J. Tucker, and Chris Middleton are the starting five for the Bucks. And already we see the, the Hawks coming out with renewed energy, trying to get this crowd behind them. Obviously, they are uh, without, again, their old world, their old world uh, point guard. The Bucks, though, in the series are dominating the Hawks in the paint, 188 to 118. Obviously, that has a lot to do with Giannis Antetokounmpo, who's just been totally dominant here in this series. Uh, for the Bucks, they obviously, again, have the compliments of uh, Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton. Now, Drew Holiday had the great first two games. He had a bad game three. Chris Middleton had a bad first two games and picked it up in game three. Uh, the Bucks blew out the Hawks in Game Two, but uh, Game Three again, Trey Young came out in a much more assertive and controlled way. He got his got his team going, and uh, they had a better chance to win Game Three. But unfortunately, like I said, he sprained ankle, which was the right foot. He actually sprained his foot, stepping back out of bounds and stepped on the referee's foot, and uh, sprained that right ankle. Chris Middleton is fouled on the perimeter. He's fouled by Bogdanovich. Hawks up 6-2 as Capella on his previous possession, uh, previous appearance at the free throw line on one of two. So they say that the fouls on the floor for the Bucks have possession. Inbounding will be Chris Middleton. So Drew Holiday working at left corner. Skip passes over to Brooke Lopez in the right corner, and he's fouled. Well, they call the foul on Collins. He pushed, he pushed P.J. Tucker fighting through the screen. He pushed P.J. Tucker fighting through the screen to close out to Brooke Lopez. We look at um, the Bucks right now. Giannis Antetokounmpo in nine games this postseason, he has 30 points and 10 rebounds at least. That's the most since Shaquille O'Neal going back to 2000. Giannis mid-range jumper for short, rebounded by Bogdanovich. Hawks. Trying to build on their four-point lead. Lou Williams, mid-range jump shot. Free throw line extended. Knocks it down. Working his way to the left and pulled up in stride. So, Hawks up two possessions, eight to two. Drew Holiday in the right corner facing the double team. Trying to get it to Giannis. It's stolen by Collins. Collins gets it to Lou Williams. So, the Bucks a bit disoriented to start this game. Collins trying to set up an alley-oop for Capella. It's good. So, the Hawks start this game 10-2. to Timeout call by Mike Budenholzer is a very similar start to game three for the Hawks. It took a while for the Bucks to settle down. 
Let's see if this timeout by Budo Hose set up the Bucks down in game four. Stay tuned for more. This is a game of day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. Folks up 10 to 2. Welcome back as the Hawks lead the Bucks 10 to 2. Three on the shot clock out of that timeout. Hawks playing uh, great defense, especially on the perimeter. Of course, uh, Chris Middleton and Giannis Antetokounmpo into uncomfortable situations. Middleton had to force that shot up as the shot clock was winding down. Bucks come out very, very flat. Meanwhile, the Hawks playing off of the, the, the crowd's energy. Has stolen the initial alley oop for John Collins was was there, but it was stolen by Middleton, and he comes back and turns it right over, trying to establish a uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo into in the post to pass sell too high. The Bucks one of six from the floor to start the game. Kevin Herter straight away three, no good. Rebounded by PJ Tucker. And Tukupo working downhill, dribble handoff to Drew Holiday. Holiday only has six points in game three. P.J. Tucker set up in that left corner, knocks it down. Good driving kick there from Drew Holiday. Drew Williams working in the paint, kicks it out to John Collins. He steps up for a three. He misses it horribly off the back rim, but chased down by Kevin Herter. And Lou Williams draws a foul. Great point fake. And on the closeout, P.J. Tucker couldn't stop his momentum. So let's see if this will be a long two. I mean, if they'll count this as a two or a three. Lou Williams, a professional scorer, the all-time leading scorer off the bench in NBA history, three times, six man of the year. He's had extended stays in multiple stops. Uh, started his career in Philadelphia, worked his way to Toronto, uh, played in Atlanta, played with the Clippers, now working his way back to Atlanta. Lou is actually from Atlanta. And he makes both free throws. So they gave him two attempts. He makes both. 12 to 5, Hawks lead. Chris Middleton working the screen, goes to and to Cooper on the post, guarded by Clint Capella. He kicks it to Chris Middleton. Middleton with the left hand floater, no good. Rebounded by Capella. Capella led the league in rebounding with 14.3 a game. John Collins on the left block. It's a cross court pass over to Bogdanovich in the right corner. They're working back to the perimeter where Lou Williams on the left wing. With seven on the shot clock. Back to Bogdanovich, right corner. He misses the three. Rebounded by Anthony Cooper. And Tukupo trying to work his way downhill, working through traffic. Good defense from Bogdanovich with the strip. So the Bucks with these turnovers here, allowing for the Hawks to get out and run and build momentum. Left to right crossover from, pardon me, right to left crossover from Lou Will on the left wing. And he knocks down a three. Again, great defense from Bogdanovich to stop Anthony Tukupo moving downhill. Drew Holiday takes a three, misses it off the back rim. P.J. Tucker fighting for the offensive rebound, can't come down with it. Rebounded by Capella. Lou Williams in the zone here in his first quarter, trying to provide a spark for this uh, Hawks team without Trey Young, who's out with the right ankle strain. John Collins, straightaway three. It rims out. The crowd was ready to explode there. And Tukupo sets up an alley-oop for Brooke Lopez, who finishes it with the left hand. Strong finish there from uh, Brooke Lopez. And quite honestly, that was a five-point swing because that three from John Collins was in and out. But it turned into an alley-oop for Brooke Lopez. So it's an eight-point game, 15-7. to seven. Hawks lead. They've been in control here in this first quarter. Bogdanovich misses the mid-range jump shot. Fighting for the rebound is Anthony Tukupo. He chases it down, moving downhill once again, trying to find P.J. Tucker in that left corner. Anthony Tukupo takes a three. He airballs it, saved by Chris Middleton, who gets it to P.J. Tucker right under the rim. So good pursuit there from Chris Middleton. Anthony Tukupo missed the three from that left corner. I mean, that left wing, excuse me. 
So 15-19, Hawks lead. But you see a timeout from head coach Nate McMillan wanting to stem the momentum. You look at that air ball from Giannis. Chris Middleton chased it down and right in one motion, guys, to P.J. Tucker right under the rim for the easy lane. So we'll be back with more as this is game four of the Eastern Conference Finals. The Hawks lead 15-9, but the Bucks lead the series two games to one. We'll be back with more. Welcome back to a game of day by day presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. The Hawks come into this game, game, game four, down two games to one, and they're playing game four without their all-star, their all-NBA former uh, Trey Young. Trey Young out with a right ankle strain that will sideline him for this game four. They're hopeful that he can be back for game five. But uh, tonight, to start this game, they came out, uh, started the game on a 10-2 run. They held that lead. They're up 15-9 uh, right now. Out of that timeout, though, they got a 24-second violation. Chris Middleton, mid-range jumper from the left block. He starts into the paint, uh, sidesteps to the baseline, and then works his way to the middle where you got a fadeaway jump. Into the game for the for the Hawks is Cam Reddish. Chris Middleton also went to the game for the Hawks. He tries to get a floater over the top of Brooke Lopez. It's blocked. And the Bucks trying to get out and run, but they uh, the play was disrupted. Good defense again by Bogdanovich, making it very difficult for Drew Holiday to get that pass to P.J. Tucker, turn into a steal. And then we got a foul, a loose ball foul, as Bogdanovich misses a three. But there's a foul against Chris Middleton. So, folks up four. 15 to 11, 352 to go coming into the game for the Hawks, Little Gallinari. Right now, the shooter for both teams is even at 5 for 13. The difference in the game right now is the Hawks have made one more three. It's, uh, the Hawks, two of seven from three, the Bucks, one of a, one of seven. John Collins with the Euro step around Bobby Portis, able to get the photo off the glass. 334 to go. Folks up by six, 17-11. Drew Holiday crossover dribble. Trying to get inside. Kicks it to Bobby Portis in the right corner. He misses the three short. Offensive rebound for Drew Holiday. He tips it to, to uh to Drew Holiday in the right corner, and John Collins commits a foul. Now, if we go back to game two, Collins got in foul trouble very, very early in the uh second half. Picked up four fouls, then Big Miller had to take him out. So now Collins, with his second personal foul here in the first for game four, will have to go out. P.J. Tucker, right corner three, set up from Drew Holiday. Beautiful pass, great shot from P.J. Tucker. So P.J. Tucker has both threes made for the Bucks here in this first quarter. Tucker, eight points already, two, two from three. Cam Reddish trying to attack down here at the rim. Trying to finish over Portis, he does. So tough acrobatic finish there from Cam Reddish. He dealt with some Achilles injuries, well, Achilles soreness early in this uh, uh, regular season, which has kept him out for extended time. But in this series, he's getting his first playoff action. Hopefully, it just extended playing time can build his confidence going into next year. So it's 19 to 14. Hawks lead the Bucks. 2:45 to go. Chris Middleton is fouled by Cam Reddish on the jump shot. We look at the rebounding advantage. The Bucks have a two rebound advantage. Um, and then we have to look at the turnover differential right now. The Bucks have four turnovers compared to the Hawks two. And the Hawks have got have gotten seven points off of those four turnovers. That also has contributed to their uh, five-point lead. Middleton makes the first free throw, so it's 19 to 15. Second free throw, good. Again, Middleton had an exceptional uh, game three, 38 points, including 20 in the fourth quarter. He outscored the Hawks by himself, 20 to 17. 
Cam Reddish steps up for three. He misses it off the side of the rim. Chris Middleton trying to find Bobby Portis in the post, but Cam Reddish, despite that miss, comes back defensively, gets the steal. So Chris Dunn, guarded by Pat Connington, now gets to switch with Chris Middleton on him, but then Gallinari wasn't ready for the pass from him. Uh, Middleton turns into a potential steal. Gallinari gets it back from Herter, takes the three at the top of the key, misses it, and it's rebounded by Middleton. Middleton, attacking, takes contact, trying to get a shot up. He does. No foul call. Hawks on the run. Chris Dunn trying to get into the paint, and he dribbles it off his knee. So it's a turnover. See the Bucks, despite not playing their best to start, very similar to game three. They started slow but picked it up late. Gets to Cooper on the left wing, gets it to Middleton. Seven, 11 on the shot clock, excuse me. Bring Forbes into the game, shoots a three from the right wing, set up by Giannis, he misses it. Rebounded by Reddish. And Reddish has his hand prints all over this game so far. Attacking that right baseline, shoots a reverse. Around Bobby Portis, he misses it. Rebounded by Antis Cooper. Antis Cooper moving downhill, kicks it to Middleton, works it at the top of the key to Bobby Portis. He steps into the three with confidence and knocks it down. So the three point line starting to pick it up for the Bucks. This is a tie game at 19. We, of course, have a minute to play here in the first quarter. The Bucks on a 14 to 4 run over the last five minutes. Gallinari takes a three, knocks it down. Good setup there from Kevin Herter and good off the ball movement from Gallinari. Forbes, over to Giannis on the left wing. Hand off to Pat Connington. Kicks it to Portis. Right corner three. He misses it. Fight up for the rebound. Pat Connington gets the rebound. Kicks it to Forbes at the top of the key. Knocks it down. So the offensive glass for the Bucks working to their advantage right now. They have uh, five offensive rebounds here in this first quarter. Gallinari, another three from the top of the key. He knocks it down over the outstretched arms of Giannis. So the offense picking up now from both sides. Hogs back up three, 25 to 22. There's a two-second differential between shot clock and game clock. There's 17 seconds in the quarter. Middleton takes a three, has a block by Cam Reddish. Hogs on the run. Rebounded by Dunn. Dunn over the herder. He takes a three at the buzzer. Misses it short, and we'll go into the second quarter with the Hawks up three. They jumped out to a big lead. Their largest lead of the game was 10 hits so far in the first, but the Hawks have settled, but the Bucks have settled down and in their own right, they've taken the lead here in the first. And nevertheless, though, we'll be back with more. This is the Game of Day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Us Day YouTube page. Hawks up three, stay tuned for more. Welcome back to a Game of Day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Us Day YouTube page. Folks, lead Milwaukee 25 to 22 as we start this second quarter. We got a uh, offensive foul called against Gallinari in the post as he pushes off against Pat Connington uh, to create post position. So it'll be a uh, buck possession in that first quarter. Um, both teams didn't shoot the best. The Hawks 9 of 21, Bucks 8 of 21. Giannis has yet to get it going offensively, but he drives and kicks out to Brent Forbes. Forbes misses a three. Another offensive rebound for the Bucks, And Forbes finds Giannis. Good offensive rebound from Pat Connington. And Scoopo faces a wall. Good defense by Bogdanovich and Oniko Gangu. Seven, uh, one on the shot clock, excuse me. Drew Holiday misses a fadeaway. Rebounded by Gallinari. So good defense by the Hawks here. Swarming the paint, making it difficult for Anthony Cooper to get downhill. The Bucks lead the series two games to one. The Hawks are without their all-star point guard, Trey Young, with a sprained right ankle. Gallinari misses a three off the uh, left side of the backboard. Three seconds left on the shot clock. Onigo Gantu gets the rebound, and he draws a foul. 
you look at this Bogdanovich defense against Drew Holiday, exceptional defense for Bogdanovich. He's been playing solid defense here in the series. Herder trying to attack Pat Connington. Kicks it to Lou Williams in that right corner. Three on the shot clock. Lou has to get a shot off. He does not. He gets to Ogunku, and as the shot clock expires, Ogunku is there for the floater in the paint. Good poise there from Lou Williams to get the, uh, get the pass set up for Ogunku. And then we see Antetokounmpo come right back, get a layup, and it was, as it was set up by Drew Holiday. We look at this Lou Williams. Great bounce pass on the baseline to the middle of the floor where Ogunku was wide open. Now we look at Drew Holiday set up here. He passed for Antetokounmpo. Good poise by Antetokounmpo as he anticipated Ogunku coming uh, for, the, for the weak side block. Got the finish. And now he has to try to complete the M1. Free throw for Antetokounmpo is a violation because he shoots an air ball. And this Atlanta crowd enjoys that air ball. They delight and the ineptitude of Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo's free throw struggles have been well documented over the years. Uh, more specifically, more recently, uh, the uh, free throw routine of Antetokounmpo and how long it actually takes has been the point of criticism over the last couple of weeks. And, and now every time he takes a free throw, the Atlanta crowd counts it down, trying to get him out of his rhythm. At times it works, at times it doesn't. There's not a free throw attempt, he shot an air ball. Now, Ogunku playing great defense in the paint as Antetokounmpo tried to work downhill, forced the turnover. So now, Antetokounmpo in 10 minutes, one of four from the floor, two points. Kevin Herter for three. He misses it. Another rebound for Antetokounmpo. Drew Holiday on the right wing, guarded by Ogunku. Holiday over to Giannis. Dribble handoff to Pat Connington. He misses a three. Offensive rebound, Drew Holiday. Holiday is fouled, going up for the finish. So we look at the offensive glass again. They've been on the boards making it happen. The offensive glass for the Bucks right now. They have seven offensive rebounds, and we're already uh, we're not even halfway through the second quarter. I mentioned Holiday struggles offensively, scoring wise in Game Three. He did have. Uh, 12 assists to go with those six points. Look at the free throw shooting for the Bucks. Outside of that Giannis miss, uh, the Bucks are uh, three or four from the free throw line. Folks be 29-24. Drew Holiday gets his second free throw. He misses it off the back rim. Holiday, usually a short, usually a surefire uh, free throw shooter, has been struggling from the free throw line here throughout these playoffs. We we'll get those numbers to you very shortly. Lou Williams gets a layup at the rim, so now Fultz take a six-point lead, 31 to 25. Holiday draws and kicks to bring forth. He loses it for a second to go straight to Pat Connington. Connington misses a three. Offense, pardon me, rebounded by Ogunku. Ogunku gets the outlet pass to Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich finds Ogunku flashing down the lane. Great off the ball movement there from Ogunku to first establish the pass with Bogdanovich. And Bogdanovich kept his head on the swivel and found Ogunku flashing down the lane where he was able to droop, be able to draw contact against Brook Lopez and finish strong with the left hand. So, folks, up by eight. And out of this timeout, Ogunku will look to. Uh, completely, I want to put the hopes up or put the hopes up now. Stay tuned for more. This is a game of day by day presented to you by the Ask Gazette YouTube page. Welcome back as the Hawks, who went into that uh, second quarter up by three, have increased their lead to nine as Onigo Gunku makes the M, uh, completes the M1. So now we see. The Bucks just completely disoriented offensively. Another turnover as Middleton tries to set up Brook Lopez in the post. He goes off the backboard. Hawks trying to build on this uh, nine-point lead. Gallinari misses the fadeaway over Brook Lopez from the left uh, baseline. 
gets it to Kupo. Over to Drew Holiday. He takes a three. It rims in. So the Bucks, the Bucks desperately needed that to keep pace with the Hawks right now. The momentum is definitely on the Hawks side. Kevin Herter. Gonna work his way into the paint. Floater off the glass over Brooklyn Lopez. Pure. 36 to 28. Hulk's lead. Middleton at the top of the key. Gets into the paint. Goes to Brent Forbes. Forbes not quite ready. Again, great defense from Bogdanovich. Forbes has to get it back to Middleton. Five on the shot clock. Middleton in the post. Can he get a shot off? He does. The fadeaway is no good off the back rim. Offensive rebound, Brooke Lopez. We got a foul. Seven twenty-seven to go here in the first half. It's a non-shooting foul, so we'll be sideline out of bounds. Game four, pardon me, game five of this series will be Thursday at eight thirty. Mid-range jumper, Drew Holiday, rims out. Fighting for the rebound is Giannis. He goes out of bounds. Look at the Bucks shooting 32% from the floor. And again, that, that uh, three-point line not in their favor right now, shooting 26%. Also, we have to pay attention to their turnovers. Right now, they're not uh, managing possessions. Cam Reddish with the floater. He can't knock it down. Go box out from P.J. Tucker. Rebound about Tucker. He gets it to Drew Holiday. Bucks on the run. Drew Holiday. What a move inside. And it's block ball Gunku. P.J. Tucker almost took a three from the left corner. Instead, things better of it. They go to the top of the key. Holiday. Kicks it to P.J. Tucker. This time, catch and shoot three. No good. Cam Reddish skies for another rebound. Reddish has been crashing the boards here early for the Hawks. We look at the rebounding for Reddish. And Reddish already with four, with four rebounds. Bogdanovich for three, knocks it down. So the Hawks now take their largest lead of the game at 11, 39 to 28. This is without Trey Young, who's out with a right ankle sprain. Look at the Bucks right now, 10 to 33 from the floor. But they get a high, uh, high efficiency shot there from Giannis into Scoopo off the alley oop center from Chris Middleton. Giannis now two or five on the floor. Gallinari has it stolen by Chris Middleton. Good back to him. Drew Holiday is there. He's trying to get it to Chris Middleton, but he's fouled to stop the fast break. We look at the pick and roll. Good pick setup from Giannis and great timing on the pass from Chris Middleton. Find Giannis rolling to the basket. Giannis scored it with that left hand and was able to finish it. So we look at the first half paint point for the Bucks. They had 12 in game three. They only have four right now. So the Hawks have definitely adjusted to the Bucks paint dominance in game three. Drew Holiday trying to find Brooke Lopez in the paint. He misses the hook shot. Great defense by Clint Capella. 39 to 30. Hawks lead. Bogdanovich trying to find Capella at the rim. He does, but Capella's foul before he can get into his shot. Foul called against Brooke Lopez. Again, uh, Bogdanovich and these point guards without Trey Young are doing a great job of probing the paint, utilizing the baseline, finding teammates for open shots. And again, this uh, Hulk's bench is playing with so much confidence. Uh, obviously, without Trey Young, Lou Williams has to come in and be a starter. But the players like Cam Reddish, uh, Onigo Gunku, those players have played with so much confidence that it's definitely put pressure on the Bucks to have to continue to score. 519 to go. Another foul called against the Bucks, this time against P.J. Tucker. Bogdanovich sets up for another three from the left wing. It rims out. Offensive rebound, Lou Williams. 
He gets it to Cam Reddish. Reddish skying down the lane, and we got an offensive foul. A little bit out of control, very aggressive towards the rim, but out of control trying to uh, go up for that finish. So under five minutes to play here in the second quarter. Bucks down nine, Hawks up nine. Great defense from Cam Reddish as he backs tips it, and it's a turnover by Chris Middleton. Cam Reddish is there for the two-hand slam. So Bucks, again, not taking care of the basketball. The Hawks have nine points off of Bucks turnover. Middleton, attacking downhill, pull-up jumper, good. Chris Middleton, two of eight from the floor. Lou Williams, going against Drew Holiday, and it's a foul. Both Drew and Lou were teammates on the Philadelphia 76ers going back to the mid-2010s. Drew doesn't believe it's a foul. But Lou will be going to the free throw line for two. First free throw for Lou. Good. Look at Lou Williams tonight. Lou playing very aggressively. In 15 minutes, three of three from the floor. Lou's two of two at the free throw line. Now three of three. He already has 10 points. Second free throw for Lou is good. So. Hawks back up by 11. That's their largest lead of the game. And scoop up. Trying to work his way into the paint. Goes to Middleton. They work the pick and roll. Mid-range jumper for Middleton. Good. So Middleton with back-to-back baskets. Might be catching the rhythm. Cam Reddish kicks it to Kevin Hurd. 15 on the shot clock. He goes to Lou Williams. Down the lane. They're trying to get it to Capella. Capella goes up over into Scoopo. We got a foul. A late call, but... Definitely a foul. The fellow not the best free throw shooter, but uh, the fouls are put in the bucks in the penalty. So uh, you know, Hawks are just trying to get at least uh, one of these. The fellow, like I mentioned earlier, led the league in rebounding. He's very much a rim runner for this team. Without Trey Young, uh, the threat of the lobs aren't there as much as they were when Trey's in because Trey has that intermediate game to his favor. He can utilize the floater, and in playing off of the floater, he can set up the lob for not only Capella, but John Collins. Capella uh, pays pays the Hulk's dividends as he makes both free throws, so Hulk's maintain it at 11-point lead. Drew Holiday is fouled by Kevin Herter going up for that layup, so Drew will go back to the free throw line. I'm going to... Uh, give you some stats right now, especially Drew Holiday over the last uh, couple of games for his playoff win. At the free throw line, Holiday hasn't been shooting as well as his regular season may uh, indicate. For the regular season, he shot 79%. In his career, he shot 78%. Here in the playoffs, he's shooting 63% at the free throw line. First free throw for Drew. Pardon me. That was um, the second. So it's 45 36. Drew makes both. Lou Williams, thought about a three, closed out by P.J. Tucker, it's perfect. He gets it to Capella with three on the shot clock. Capella trying to get a shot up. And we got an offensive foul against Capella. Good defense there by Drew Holiday. Capella out of control there, trying to establish post position. But the shot clock was winding down and he had to get a shot off. Three twenty to go here in the second quarter. The Hawks came into this quarter up three, 25 to 22. 
Middleton takes a three, top of the key. He misses it short. Fighter for the rebound. Bobby Portis tips it out. Lou Williams is there for the rebound. He slows down as Giannis is there. Pulls up for the mid-range jump shot. Over the outstretched arms of Giannis, it doesn't matter. Tough shot made by a tough shot maker. Antetokounmpo trying to get aggressive. Attacks Clint Capella. We got a goal 10. This Hawks crowd is deafening right now. They're giving this Hawks team energy. Obviously, without Trey Young, this Hawks team is the underdog, but they're playing with desperation, trying to keep their season alive. They know if they lose this series, they lose, if they lose this game, the series is on the brink with the Hawks down three games to one. If they win this game, they tie that two. Yes, the Bucks take back home court advantage with their game three victory, but at least the series will be tied going into game five. Seven on the shot clock. Kevin Herter, guarded by P.J. Tucker. Herter gets it to Collins. At the rim with the reverse. He can't finish. Portis with the save. He gets it to Pat Connington. So the Bucks on the run. Down by nine. 47 to 38. Middleton kicks it to Portis. Portis already knocked down the number of threes here in this game. He misses a three at the top of the key. So the Hawks dodge a bullet there. 47-38. And... Nate McMillan calls a timeout, trying to uh, settle things down just a bit. The Hawks, as I mentioned, up three coming into this quarter. They've outscored the Bucks by six here in the second, and they're up by nine. Stay tuned for more. This is the game of day by day presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. Hawks up 47 38 over the Milwaukee Bucks. Welcome back. Out of that timeout. An uh, air ball from Kevin Herter turns into a Giannis fadeaway that he misses. It rims out, rebounded by John Collins. So under two minutes to play, 140 remaining here in the first half. The Hawks up by nine. So it seems as if they've taken the Bucks' best shot so far. They've been able to sustain it. They've led the entire way. The largest lead up by 11. John Collins almost turns over the basketball. Four on the shot clock. Gets it to Kevin Herter. Herter, mid-range jump shot over Giannis. Knocks it down. So big shot there from Kevin Herter. Herter has played with poise this entire playoff. And we see another turnover this time. Drew Holiday trying to get it to Giannis. Again, Bogdanovich playing exceptional defense tonight. Herter, left the right crossover back to the middle where he finds uh, Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich with the mismatch on Chris Middleton. Eight, able to find Capella at the rim for the finish. 51-38, the largest lead for the Hawks. We're under a minute to go here in the first half. 45 seconds left, and we see a potential turnover as uh, Cam Reddish uh, deflected it away from Middleton. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Giannis attacking Capella. Draws a foul. Giannis struggling at the free throw line. Already has shot an air ball earlier tonight, which, to the delight of the crowd, was a violation. It's to Kuko cool tonight. Three of seven from the floor, or one from the free throw line, or one from three. The big three for the Bucks struggling from the floor. Chris Middleton, three of ten. Drew Holiday, two of seven. Again, the, the countdown for the crowd. Let's see if it works. Giannis misses the first one short. So it's working, at least for tonight so far. Giannis all two at the free throw line. He struggled at the line, as I mentioned. Uh, historically, more recently, he tried to get it up. He tried to get the percentage up. But I think for the Hawks, more than anything, of course, you want Giannis to... Uh, misses free throws, but the fact that you've been able to hold him to only two attempts so far in this first half shows the uh, discipline defensively that they played with. And also, the fact that the Bucks keep turning over the basketball is taking, it's, uh, it's taking the uh, Hawks off the hook defensively. Six 
second free throw for Giannis, another air ball. So two air balls here in this first half. 41 seconds to go. Giannis clearly uh, out of sorts here with this Atlanta crowd working against him. Kevin Herter with the basketball on the left wing, 30 seconds to go in the half. Bogdanovich thought about a three instead of tax Giannis at the rim. Misses the layup. Rebound about Chris Middleton. Good defense on the weak side there from Pat Connaughton to tip out that rebound. So it's essentially the, the uh, shot clock and game clock virtually identical, about a half second difference. Drew Holiday with the basketball on the left wing, attacking Bogdanovich. Gets downhill, kicks it to P.J. Tucker. Left corner, three-point shot, falls short. With one second left, Bogdanovich at the buzzer. Heaves it at the half court. It won't count, but the Hawks go into the half up 13. They went into the quarter up three. They outscored the Bucks by 10 in that quarter. The defense picked up. They forced so many turnovers. They outscored the Bucks 16 Pardon me, uh, 26 to 16. You look at the field goal percentage from both sides. Bucks shooting 34%. Hawks shooting 48%. The free throw percentage for the Hawks, 50, pardon me, 89%, while the Bucks are 56%. The steals for the, for the Hawks, they already have seven steals. They forced so many turnovers against this Bucks team. Eight turnovers against this Bucks team. And the, the Hawks have scored 11 points over those eight turnovers. Uh, also, points in the paint have worked in the Hawks' favor in this first half. 20 points in the paint compared to 14 for the Bucks. So we'll see if the if the Bucks can respond and adjust going into that halftime. But right now, the momentum is on the Hawks' side. They're trying to seize this series and tie that too. Obviously, they're doing it without their overall point guard Trey Young. But their role players are stepping up, and you're starting to see this crowd start to get to this Bucks team. We'll see again. What this 15-minute intermission does, we'll be back with more. This is the Game of Day by Zay. Presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. Bucks lead this Eastern Conference Finals two games to one. But the Hawks are up 13. Looking to tie it at two. Welcome back as the Hawks lead, the Hawks are leading the Bucks 51 to 38 out of the half. Bogdanovich knocks down the three to give the Hawks their largest lead in the game at 16. But Drew Holiday comes right back and gets the three of his own. Now up to 11 points for Drew Holiday. So it's 54 to 41 at the rim. Click a puller blocked by Giannis Antetokounmpo and it stopped the fast break. Uh, Lou Williams fouls Drew Holiday. We look at this block from Antetokounmpo. Right at the rim, Capella tried to go up with two hands. Not enough as Antetokounmpo came straight through the middle with that right hand to block him. Antetokounmpo moving downhill at the rim, slams it home over John Collins. So the Bucks coming out with some intensity here. Lou Williams working the right sideline at the rim, trying to get a shot up, draw the foul. Good craftiness there from Lou Williams. As we look at this replay, Antetokounmpo going right at John Collins. Statue of Liberty, yes. He avoids the offensive foul. And John avoids the foul because he knows uh, he has to remain on the floor. He's dealt with too much foul trouble here in this series. Lou Williams makes the first free throw. Five of five from the free throw line. Lou Williams starting tonight in place of Trey Young. Trey Young, the all-star, all-world point guard, who's played exceptionally well here in his playoffs. Uh, coming off of a uh, right ankle sprain, the Hawks are very cautious with Trey having him sit out tonight. Hopefully, he'll be able to rehab and get rest in preparation for game five, which will be on Thursday. So it's a 12-point game. Chris Middleton straight away three, can't knock it down. Offensive rebound potentially there for Brook Lopez. Rolls straight to Giannis. And he lays it up. So now it's a 10-point game. The luck starting to favor the Bucks right now. 55 to 45. Hawks lead. Trying to establish John Collins is on the left block, guarded by PJ Tucker. Pardon me, on the right block. But Collins misses the uh, jump shot. Giannis at the rim. Trying to get it to Drew Holiday. It's deflected out of bounds. 16 on the shot clock. So we look at it. 
this scrap for that rebound. John Collins was coming away with it, but he fell to the ground and went straight to Giannis. Three-point shot, Brooke Lopez, good. From that right corner. And now it's a seven-point game. The Bucks have come out with a better sense of urgency tonight. If they win this game, they'll go up three games to one with a spring over and potential opportunity to close out this series in game five on Thursday. Hawks trying to stay alive, obviously without the services of Trey Young. But this crowd and this Atlanta Hawks team are not laying down. Kevin Hurd knocks down a mid-range jump shot. So it's 57 to 48. Middleton on the left wing, guarded by Herder. Takes a screen from Giannis. Giannis at the rim. Goes straight up. And he finishes it. Hawks were looking for the travel. Hawks were looking for the foul. 57 to 50. Hawks lead. Going to Capella in the post. And he's fouled. This foul is called on Brook Lopez. Hawks down by as many as 16. Pardon me, the Bucks were down by as many as 16, but they're fighting back, uh, trailing by seven. They came into this half down 13. And so far, they've outscored the Hawks by six. And we got an offensive foul on by Bogdanovich, trying to create, trying to clear space against PJ Tucker. He jumps into PJ, and usually we would see that foul where the player jumps into the defender. They would give the, they would reward the offensive player, but the referee. Uh, saw the, the contact from Bogdanovich. So, Bucks down seven with the basketball. Drew Holiday attacking the paint, looking to set up an alley. Wasn't clean, goes to P.J. Tucker. Tucker at the rim, goes straight on the baseline, and he doesn't get the finish. We got an offensive foul. It'll be a clear out. That was a late call, though. They, they waited for P.J. to actually finish the layup before they called the offensive foul. They called the offensive foul against Brooke Lopez. So Lopez picks up two quick fouls here in the second half. Three-point shot, Lou Williams. Big three for Lou Williams and the Hawks. They needed that just to create more separation. Lou Williams tonight, 17 points, 5 of 5 from the field. And good defense from Clint Capella as he steals it from Brooke Lopez. Bucks on the run. Heard it trying to get it to John Collins. It's deflected out of bounds, but possession will stay with the Hawks. Big three from Lou Williams to get this lead back up to double digits. Three-point shot for Bogdanovich. Off the back rim, fighter for the rebound is John Collins, and he's fouled by Drew Holiday. You can see Drew Holiday telling his bigs, telling Giannis, telling uh, Brooke Lopez, we got to box out right now. You can see Holiday, you see Holiday trying to tip it to a teammate, but Collins came skying in there. Eight on the shot clock, Bogdanovich, right corner. Rims out, rebounded by Chris Middleton. 60 to 50, Hawks lead. Middleton. We're going to get it going offensively. Off the dribble against Collins. Holiday, jab, step on the right wing. Seven on the shot clock, guarded by Lou Williams. Attacks with the left hand, goes to P.J. P.J. has a strip. 2.4 left on the shot clock, possession is made with the Bucks. P.J., usually known to be a shooter from the corners, has gotten a lot of paint work right under that rim tonight. It's Tupo, sweeps through, fadeaway jump shot, able to get it to fall. As the shot clock was winding down, Giannis starting to pick it up here in the second half. 14 points for Giannis tonight. And then I'll dribble from Lou Williams, trying to set up an alley for Capella. And he slams it home over Giannis. And Giannis falls to the ground. And Giannis is down. Oh, my. Oh, man. Giannis is down. Giannis is grabbing his left knee right now. This is not a good, this is not a good sight right now. This is not good. 
this is not good. And you can see that the Bucks bench is 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 in uh despair right now. You can see Capella slamming home and Giannis hyperextended his left knee as soon as he came down on the screen. Oh man, oh man, it's a full hyperextension. That is not what you want to see. No way. No way. Oh man, this is horrible. This is horrible. The, the crowd is silent. Nobody wants to see this. We'll be back with more. This is the Game of Day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. Everyone in the basketball world is worried right now. As John said to Tupo, hyperextended his left leg, coming down, trying to stop an alley -oop. We'll be back with more. Welcome back. This is the Game of Day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. Hawks up by eight, and they're worried about their uh, franchise player. Giannis Antetokounmpo, who went down with the hyperextension of his uh, left knee, to the uh, to the delight of the Bucks organization, though Giannis uh, definitely walked gingerly, but he was trying to put weight on it and trying to uh, trying to work his way through it. He definitely uh, labored a bit down on the floor, but as as he had time to rest, he was able to walk it off uh, much better than many expected. Lou Williams at the rim gets a photo to fall. So Hawks up by 12 now. This is a sensitive time for the Bucks. Lou Williams with 19 points, 6 of 6 from the floor, 5 of 6 from the free throw line. Chris Middleton, floater at the rim, can't get it to fall. Six fifty-four. Third quarter, five forty-seven to go. Lou Williams has to get a shot up. He goes to Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich knocks down the three. So the Hawks up fifteen right now, looking to take advantage while the uh, Bucks are reeling. And the Hawks, in their own right, are without their star Trey Young, who's been out for the entire game. So. Uh, obviously, injuries are part of the game. You don't want to see the stars get injured in any capacity. Not that you want to see anyone get hurt, but definitely uh, the stars getting hurt changes the trajectory of a series of a game, not only a series. Uh, Hawks up by 15 as we approach five minutes to go. Lou Williams finds John Collins right corner three. He misses it. Fighting for the rebound is Capella. He gets it to Herder. Looking to reset at the top of the key is Bogdanovich. Nine seconds left. On the shot clock, Herder, guarded by Brooke Lopez. Can he get a shot off? Gets to the lane, floater, good. So it was 17, and you can see Giannis Antetokounmpo coming to the bench. Giannis is making his way back to the bench. Even though the Hawks are on a 9 nothing run right now, you can see Giannis trying to work his way back into the game. He's on the bench providing support. It's a 17 point game though. 71 to 54. Herder for three. He misses it off the back rim. Offensive rebound, John Collins. Works it back to Bogdanovich. Left corner three. Good. Big three for the Hawks. And they're up by 20 with 4.16 to go in the third. This crowd is on their feet. 74 to 54. 4.16 to go in the third. Hawks up 20. Welcome back as the Bucks have opened up a 20, pardon me, the Hawks have opened up a 20 point lead on the Bucks. The Bucks have been outscored 12 to two since Giannis Antetokounmpo's uh, right uh, leg, uh, pardon me, left leg extension. He actually came out to the bench, but when the Hawks went up by 20, he walked back to the uh, Bucks locker room. Hopefully it's just to give extended treatment, knowing that this game is out of hand and you don't want to risk uh, any more injuries uh, going into game five and potentially 
uh, further in this series. Uh, but again, the Hawks doing what they had to do, knowing that they don't have Trey Young, uh, no, no Giannis right now for the latter part of this game to potentially go well in the Hawks' favor. Can the Bucks make a run? Let's see what they can do. Bobby Porter's trying to get a photo across the lane. He can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Lou Williams. Lou Williams slows it down with 3.30 to go here in the third quarter. The Hawks have erupted. They've outscored the Bucks by seven so far in this quarter. Again, Lou Williams playing an exceptional game. Bogdanovich playing a great game on cue. Knocks down another three from the left wing. Bogdanovich tonight is six of 11 from three. He has 18 points. Six of 15 from the floor, but he had four steals. And again, his defense has been exceptional all the way around, not just in the uh, steals category. Chris Middleton stops the bleeding momentarily with the basket at the rim, working in the post against Bogdanovich. It's a 19-point game, 77 to 56. Lou Williams pulls up for the mid-range jump shot, can't get it to fall. Drew Holiday out on the run, gets it to Middleton. Middleton with the Euro step, trying to get the floater inside, he gets it to fall. So it's, part of me, that was a 21-point game. Now it's, uh, now it's 19, now 77 to 58. So back-to-back -back baskets from Middleton. He gets it to 19. 220 to go. And we see uh, Nate McMillan call a timeout. This Hawks team is in control. Bogdanovich, Lou Williams, uh, and so many others. Clint Capella, uh, John Collins. This particular Hawks group has stepped up. In the face of adversity, there's been so many different challenges that have come with this particular season, most notably injuries and COVID. But it's all about the durability and who can who can last. Right now, the Hawks are battling without Trey Young and the Bucks, who have who have been uh, who have been sidestepping the, the traps of injury so far throughout this season. Uh, despite the injury to Dante DiVincenzo, were on in route to the finals. If they were able to defeat this Hawks team. Now, with this Instagram injury, we're not quite sure. Let's stay tuned for more. This is a game day by Zay. Send it to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page, Hawks Sub 19, 77 and 58. Welcome back to a game of day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. The Hawks lead the Bucks by 19, 77 to 58. The Bucks are without Giannis Antetokounmpo, who hyperextended. His left knee. He did walk off on his own volition, so that was that was a good sign to see. He actually came back out to the bench, but when the Hawks went up by 20, he actually walked back to the bench. There's been no word in regards to uh, the extent of, of his injury or if he will return. Uh, for the Hawks, they played this entire game without Trey Young, who's out with a right knee, with a part of me with a right ankle strain that he suffered back in game three towards the latter part of that third quarter. He did finish the game and he did score 35 points, but he was definitely limited. And they said that the pain uh, did, did not subside over the uh, day and a half in which they had time to recover. Uh, tonight, the Hawks still are overcoming that injury in absence of training and just coming out with desperation. They played well the entire game. They've, they've led for the entire game. They've been in a position to uh, tie this series at two as uh, Middleton making both free throws. It's a 19-point game. When you look at how they played, they forced turnovers. Even with Giannis in the game, the Bucs just didn't have it tonight. Cam Reddish from the right corner, knocks in the three. Great ball movement from Atlanta. And we see Cam Reddish again getting his first uh, playoff action here in this series. He's definitely playing aggressive, trying to find his way. Chris Middleton, mid-range jump shot, good. So we had a 20-point game. It's 82 to 62. You have a potential 12-minute uh, quarter coming up with a little bit over a minute and 15 left hand in third. There's still time, but for the Bucks, they have to get stops. And without the two, without the defensive player of the year on your team, and Giannis, it's going to be very, very difficult. We got a foul against Chris Middleton on Gallinari. He swiped down. Gallinari was falling. Middleton picked him up before he hit the ground. Yeah. 
You see the pump fake by Gallinari and the swipe down by Middleton. Middleton able to get the uh, get off ball, but it was definitely contact with the shoulder. Tough hard foul by Middleton, but you can see Middleton trying to catch him before he actually hits the ground. Hard foul by Middleton, nothing malicious, and he actually tried to uh, protect Gallinari from falling to the ground. Hawks up by 20 with a minute and five to go here in the third. 4.2 on the shot clock, but obviously with the foul. That won't matter. Gallinari will probably go to the free throw line for two, but they're uh, reviewing this to see if it was excessive contact from Chris Middleton. I don't think it will be, but we'll see what they say. Uh, we'll be back with more. This is the Game of Day by Zay presented to you by the Ask YouTube. So they say it's a common foul. Gallinari gets two free throws, uh, makes both, so it's a 22 point game. Jeff T into the game for the Bucks. Under a minute to play. T actually played for Atlanta under uh, Mike Budenholzer. Look at Jeff T. Thought about a three. Instead, tries to get a, a pass inside to Middleton. Probably should have took the three. And you see Middleton trying to tell him to be aggressive on that shot there. But it's a kick ball against Atlanta. Kick ball against Atlanta. T. Thought about a three. Instead, goes for the uh, layup inside. Rebounded by Kevin Herter. Good uh, interior defense by John Collins. 35 seconds to go in the third. Cam Reddish, who's had a great game so far, shooting with confidence, knocks down another three-point shot. So Cam Reddish having a career game tonight. Look at Cam Reddish's numbers so far tonight. He definitely played uh, out of his mind. Four for seven from the floor, two threes, now with 10 points. Chris Middleton shoots a three, misses it. Rebounded by Gallinari. Seven seconds left in the third. Chris Dunn with the basketball. Trying to find Gallinari. Can he get a shot up? He does. It goes off the back rim. The offense wasn't organized over the last, over that final uh, seven seconds. Nevertheless, though, Hawks up by 25. 87 to 62 going into the final 12 minutes of this game four. So the Hawks, understanding the circumstances without Trey Young, uh, trying to save their season, and take this back to Milwaukee, tie that too. Now, without Trey Young tonight, the Hawks have been able to surge, play with urgency, and put themselves in position to win this game. The Bucks, who definitely didn't play with desperation, they were playing from behind the majority of the games. Uh, had, had Giannis into Scupo, and while he was catching the rhythm in that third quarter, hyperextended his left knee. He was down for a minute, heavy grimaces, and many people were scared for the worst but he was able to walk off on his own volition and actually came back out to the bench to support the Bucs and maybe potentially come back into the game. But as the Hawks went up by 20, uh, the Bucs got better with it and sent them back to the locker room. So we'll, we still haven't gotten word on the extent of Giannis' injury, how, how long he'll be out. If he'll be out, we'll see what it is. Hopefully, he'll just be good and need uh, the rest of this game and tomorrow to rest in preparation for game five on Thursday. But if the Hawks and, and Bucks have to play further games without, this star, without their stars, that definitely changes the trajectory of this series. So stay tuned for more. This is a game of day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Out Day YouTube page. Again, Hawks up by 25, 87-62. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back. This is the Game of Day by Zay presented to you by the Ice Cousin YouTube page. We reached the final 12 minutes of game four between the Bucks and the Hawks. Hawks up by 23, and we get an update on Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's just a life, it's, it's a left knee hyper extension. He won't return for the rest of the fourth quarter. Uh, but that's the good news that there was no uh, ligament damage or any torn ACL or anything in that fashion. If you're the Bucks, you just want to get him as much rest as possible. Could he miss a game five knowing that this series is tied at two? It'll give you a chance for the Bucks to prepare without him. And being at home, you might be able to win one game without him uh, just to give him rest and, and potentially a, a closeout opportunity on 
uh, Saturday, or he could come back and play in game in game five at home. You never know. But for the Bucks, they at least know that it's only a, a hyper extension. Folks, though, they can't worry about that. They're up 21 trying to save their season. Gallinari misses a three. So Drew Holiday and the Bucks trying to uh, seize this momentum right now. They get a Brook Lopez fadeaway. It's a 19 point game, 10 30 to go. Can this Bucks team come back? Let's see. Kevin Herter guarded by Brent Forbes. Herter trying to get a shot off. He does off the back rim. He skies for the offensive rebound, able to finish it with one hand. Tried to get it to Cam Reddish. Reddish couldn't get the Reddish couldn't get the layup. Rebounded by Brooke Lopez and Drew Holiday. Draws and kicks. Right corner three Bobby Portis. It rims out. Those are the type of threes that the Bucks need right now. Nate McMillan calls a timeout. 9.55 to go. Folks up 19, trying to finish out this game and tie this Eastern Conference Final at two. Stay tuned for more. This is the Game of Day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Dr. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to the Game of Day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Dr. YouTube page. We are back. Folks up by 19 in game four of the Eastern Conference Finals. Trying to tie the series at two. Bucks lead the series 2 1. Folks down one game to two. Uh, playing this game without Trey Young. Uh, Bogdanovich misses a three. So the Bucks trying to make a quick run, but they're turning over the basketball too much, which is really bailing the, the, the Hawks out. But defensively, the Hawks have just, again, played with that urgency and they've seized the opportunities. The Hawks tonight have scored uh, 14 points off of Bucks turnovers. The Bucks only have two points off of the Hawks turnovers. Lou Williams, hounded by Drew Holiday. Three point shot for Bogdanovich off the back rim, no good. And the Bucks trying to save it. Be Bucks basketball. Red Forbes straight away three knocks it down. That's a big three. So now it's a 16 point game with nine minutes to go. Can the can the Bucks hold on? Well, can the Hawks hold on? Lou Williams trying to sustain the lead. Attacks right away. Gets a layup. Drew Holiday. Trying to finish at the rim. He knocks it down. Looking for the foul. 8.40 to go. Bogdanovich with the basketball. Bogdanovich has played exceptionally well here tonight. He's knocking down big shot after big shot. Clint Capella looking for Bogdanovich in the right wing. Bogdanovich attacks the rim. Able to finish over the outstretched arms of uh, Brook Lopez. Got right in front of Brook Lopez and was able to seal him off. So back to 18. Cross over dribble from Lou. Pardon me, from uh, Drew Holiday. Mid range jumper from Holiday, no good. But Bobby Portis is there for the putback. We approach eight minutes to go. Chris Middleton looking to come back into the game. Lou Williams, left corner. Thought about a three. Looking for a teammate. Goes to Kevin Herter. Five on the shot clock. Herter. With the push off, no call. Able to get the floater right over the outstretched arms of uh, Bobby Fortis as the shot clock was winding down. Heard it tonight 12.6 rebounds, seven assists. So a great all around game for her. Bucks going to post to Brooke Lopez, deflected out of bounds. And Chris Middleton is coming back into the game. Middleton is not far removed from an, from an outstanding fourth quarter going back to game three, scored 20. In the in the fourth quarter, so can he do? Can he turn it around? We look at Brent Forbes wide open in the corner for three. He misses it. John Collins skies for the rebound. I think Forbes was a bit too open there. He initially wanted to come off the curl and pull right away, but I think he was surprised to be that open. So we approach seven minutes to play. Hawks up by 18. Here at home, this Hawks crowd has been amazing. 
Herder trying to set up Capella under the rim. Capella, guarded by Lopez, had to get a shot up. Over the backboard and it drops in. Wow. Sometimes when it's your night, it's just your night. That is a shot for the ages. Rook Lopez for three. He misses it. Clint Capella had the rebound, but it goes out of bounds. Possession will stay with the Bucks. But if you look at that shot by Capella on the right sideline, going out of out of bounds on the baseline, it goes right over the backboard. Didn't hit the backboard, so it's an eligible shot. Went straight down into the rim. Sometimes, again, when it's your night, it's your night. Hawks get a turnover. Kevin Herter on the run. Looks to Lou Williams. Right wing three. Off the back off the back rim. Rebounded by Bobby Portis. It's a 20-point game. We approach six minutes to go in the fourth. Drew Holiday looks to kick it to Portis. Portis over to Middleton. Middleton pulls up for three. We got a moving screen. Falls against Bobby Portis trying to clear space for Middleton. Again, we look at this propeller shot. Able to get the shot off as the shot clock's running down. And not only did he get the shot off, Brooke Lopez is trying to close out as much as he can. The Bucks are down. They have to get every stop. And you can see Trey Young enthused at the highest level, understanding the uh, the magnitude of this moment in that shot is just emblematic of what the Hawks have done all night. 95-75, we approach six minutes to go. Bobby Portis with the steal, but uh, Pat Connington wasn't able to save it. So Hawks maintain possession, five seconds, four on the shot clock, 6.06 to go here in the fourth. If the Hawks are able to close out this win, which it looks like they will, they will tie this series at two. We can go back to their semifinals matchup with Philadelphia. Philadelphia came in to Atlanta, took home court back, one game three in, in blowout fashion. The Hawks came back and were able to overcome an 18-point deficit to win game four and really change the trajectory of that series because going into Philadelphia for game five, Philadelphia was up by 27, looked to take control of the series. Hawks came back, got the fit. Uh, Hawks came back down 27, won that game, and then defeated Philadelphia in seven. Now, this Bucks team... Did win game three, so they have home court back in the event, back to the advantage. But could they be without the services of Giannis Antetokounmpo going forward? We have to see. He has a left knee hyperextension, which is good news if you're the Bucks. So you know, uh, with with extended rest, he will, you know, get back to uh, serviceable, and being able to play at a high level. But depending on the circumstances of the series, can the in the Bucks of four to have him rest for a game or two? I don't think so. Lou Williams trying to set up an alley oop for Capella right at the rim is there. So the Hawks up by 19, uh, 97 to 78. Bobby Portis throwed about a left corner three. Instead, takes the pump fake, gets the floater up, rebounded by Capella. We look at Capella's night tonight. Uh, Capella already uh, has one of the shots of the season. Uh, a couple of seconds ago, Capella tonight, six of seven from the floor. He only has eight rebounds, but he has 15 points. So this this Hawks team is in control. We look at this previous basket set up from Lou Williams. He sets up the alley oop for Capella, guides it right into that rim. And then we look at John Collins get a jumper mid range from the right sideline. He knocks it down. So the Hawks up 21, 99. To 78, 515 to go here in the fourth. This is the game of day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. This is game four of the Eastern Conference Finals. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to a game of day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. It's five minutes to go. Folks up 21, Drew Holiday drew a foul. Attacking the basket, Holiday tonight not shooting well from the floor, six of 16. Uh, 17 points, nine assists, five rebounds, but uh, he didn't shoot well from the floor. And if Bucks team struggled with uh, taking care of the basketball, which really played a huge part in why this Bucks team, why this Hawks team, excuse me, was able to get out and run and play at a high pace. Uh, the Hawks have uh, 40 points in the paint, points off of turnovers. The Hawks 
have four, 14 turnovers and have 14 points over the turnovers. Six on the shot clock. Lou Williams finds Cam Reddish. Reddish, step back three over Chris Middleton. Good. Cam Reddish having a career night tonight, playing out of his mind. The type of performance you need if you're trying to uh, save your season and put yourself in position to battle with uh, with three games left in this series. Kevin Herter knocks down the right corner three with 419 to go. Hawks up by 24. Mike Bruno holds the calls timeout and probably will empty out the bench. But back to Cam Reddish tonight. Cam Reddish, five of nine from the floor, two of three from three. He has uh, 12 points. He has 12 points. Kevin Herter tonight. I mentioned his all-around play, seven assists, six rebounds. He has 15 points, seven of uh, 14 from the floor. The three-pointer he just hit from the right corner is actually his first three-pointer of the night. So outside of the three, he missed six threes. Um, he only missed one two-point shot, so he's 7 of 14. Stay tuned for more. This is a Game of Day by Day presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. Hawks up, 104 to 8. Let's Welcome back to this Game of Day by Isaiah presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. We look at the Hawks empty out their bench as we see Elijah Bryant get a basket coming out of that timeout. You see Elijah Bryant, uh, Mama D. D. Kite. You see uh, the National to Cooper also into the game as well. Clint Capella took a shot to the face right now. We get a timeout from, uh, we get a timeout from Nate McMillan to see uh, what happened there. Fighting for that rebound to see, uh, you see Capella take an elbow to the nose, and it burned. And it burned for sure, but he definitely got hit in the nose with the elbow. So Capella's down, 3.28 to go here in the fourth. For both teams, health is of paramount importance, especially for uh, their star players being uh, out right now. Trey Young out with a right swing ankle. He didn't play in game four tonight. Vanessa, uh, pardon me, Giannis had who played tonight through the first three quarters, was, was present, wasn't playing his best, but he turned his corner towards the middle part of that third and hyper extended his left knee, uh, which is good news for the Bucs because it could have been way worse. But especially during this blowout situation for the Hawks, the Bucs just want to get off, get off this uh, court with, with health. Again, being a paramount point. So stay tuned for more. This is the Game of Day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to the Game of Day by Zay presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. Clint Capella actually worked his way back to the locker room. Again, he took an elbow to the nose from Sam Merrill. Uh, inadvertent, obviously, both fighting for the rebound. Merrill extended his left elbow just a bit. And uh, Pella going for the rebound in his own right, took a shot to the nose, so he had to go back to the locker room. For the Bucks, they're just trying to finish out this quarter and then get uh, more extended news on Jan Santos left knee uh, hyperextension. Uh, considering the circumstances of this series so far, it's been tip for tat in terms of games. Uh, Hawks won game one, Bucks won game two and three. Now the Hawks win game four. It's being tied 2 2 going back home. Do you rest Giannis on the safe side to be cautious? Give him a couple more days to get that treatment, get that rehab necessary to put himself in position for a game six closeout if the Bucks win? Or uh, or do you, do you if, he, if he's healthy, do you, do you run the risk of playing him and having him uh, injure his knee even more? For the Hawks, uh, they're without Trey Young. They were able to survive tonight in, in blowout fashion. They're up about 20 right now with three minutes to go. And you can see a big time slam on the fast break as another turnover is forced for the Hawks. A big time basket, this time by Nathan Knight. Knight able to get the two hand slam. So for this, uh, for this Hawks team, without Trey Young, they won tonight. Do, do the Hawks fresh Trey Young again 
for game five, knowing that they'll have game six at home, and having those days to get the rehab in. Obviously, the extent of the injury, it wasn't able to heal over one day. So you're doing those extra days. And if he misses game five, uh, do you run the risk of doing that, knowing that you could be down three games to two coming back with the pressure of game six? These are all questions that have to be answered on both sides. But we do know that this series will be extended to a game six. Folks up by 24 right now, under two minutes to play. 108 to 84. Uh, this entire season has been a challenge for both, for all, for all involved. Obviously, dealing with COVID last year, shutting down the season uh, for, for three and a half months. You have to salvage it the best way you can with the bubble, uh, which definitely saved the season. But it went into the it went into the fall of 2020, which throws off the schedule of a normal offseason and start of a regular season. So. With that, the, the NBA has its shortest offseason ever, only 71 days for uh, the Lakers in Miami, who actually went to the finals. You have the shortest offseason ever. You start this season on Christmas uh, or a couple of days before Christmas, trying to get in a normal calendar year, which was 72 games this season. You're dealing with COVID. You're dealing with protocols and trying to make sure you can uh, salvage the season as best you can. I think you're dealing with the injuries because most players who have a normal offseason and get their body ready for the long haul of an 82 game season plus playoffs didn't have that and their bodies didn't have the recovery time they're getting hurt at a, at a higher clip. We're seeing teams affected, we're seeing stars be injured, where normally you wouldn't see that. So this, this year has definitely been trying for all involved. You definitely want to have health again at the paramount importance at a paramount importance. But uh, all of these teams involved in the last four, whether it be the Clippers, Suns, Bucks, or Hawks, you definitely need your stars. You definitely need your stars. It's one away to 85 right now, a minute to go. Scholar, Scholar Mays on the floor right now, working, working his way into the paint. Great. Behind the back play there from Mays. He's able to uh, go behind the back, then go straight up, take the contact, and finish. So it's 110 to 85. You look at the fake. He actually faked the pass to the right corner, then went right up at Mama D. D. Kite. And we got a technical foul against a Mays. Mace had something to say to, to be a guy off of the finish. It was definitely a strong finish, but he let him know about it after. So it was 110 to 86. Elijah Bryant with the with a floater. There's a lot in the air, up in the air on both sides in regards to how uh, Trey Young, or if Trey Young will play game five, and there's, up, there's a lot up in the air for Giannis. We have to know the extent of his hyperextension and if he will play. Uh, Trey Young was a game time decision tonight, and the Hawks felt it was better to just rest him. As a team, they came out again and just played with the, with the sense of urgency that you want to see from the team down 2-1, knowing when they needed this win to tie the series and uh, give themselves a chance in the best out of three over the final three games of this series. Um, when you look at the balance that they got scoring-wise, Clint Capella's 15 points. Lou Williams had 21. He only has two shots tonight, seven of nine from the floor. Bogdanovich had 20 points, seven of 19, but six of 14 from three, including a huge third quarter that stretched the, the game and really took, really seized the game from the Bucks. You had a Kevin Herter come on strong towards the latter part of the game, 15 points. Then you've got uh, big bench performances from the little Gallinari, Onigo Gunku, and Cam Reddish. So when you win a game like this, now it's the best out of three series tied at two. The Hawks have, again, exceeded all expectations to this point in the season. And to win this home game without Trey Young in this fashion should only build and bode well for your confidence. For the Bucks who came into Atlanta, got home court back, but it might have came at a cost. You got to see again 
the extent of Giannis Antetokounmpo's left knee hyperextension. Hope, that's good news, though, that it isn't an ACL or MCL or anything of that nature. So that's the good news. We'll be back with more to cover this series. It's a best of three now. As the series is tied to stay tuned for more, as this is a game of day by day presented to you by the Ask Isaiah YouTube page. You just finished listening to the Atlanta Hawks defeat the Milwaukee Bucks, 110 to 88.